11, 43, it reads, And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Amen. Amen. The Bible talks about, and you guys give me just a few minutes, because so many times and often I'm realizing that we're still walking around in grave clothes. Amen. And the Bible states that when Jesus went to the tomb of Lazarus, there's a little bit about the story, that he went. And I looked at that scripture and I said, why did Jesus weep? Because sometimes you weep. And I know Lazarus was his good friend. But sometimes you weep because the person that you love is not there. And yes. so you carry that. And yes. so I begin to say, Jesus wept. And we do know it wasn't a cry because crying was different. But the Bible says he wept. And if you ever wept in life, you know it's hard. It's hard for us to yeah. And you just don't cry. And, and you know, you can barely catch your breath a lot of times when you're weeping. Amen. And you know, and when you're weeping, it comes from the gun of you, yeah. from the spirit. Yeah. And it comes out your belly. It just comes, it just rolls. And it's just not an everyday weep, you know, crying. Huh? But when you weep, it's hard up in every muscle in you. And your whole spirit sometimes begins to shake. Yeah. And you get nervous. And you, it's just an experience that. When you catch it, you'll know. Because when it said Jesus wept, and I begin to say, and look at and I looked at that scripture, and I say, he just didn't cry. And I understood Lazarus was his best friend, was his good friend. But when people are hurting mm -hmm. right next to you, like Mary and Martha, and their hearts were heavy, and I begin to say, that's why. One reason why Jesus began to be. Yes. Because when you're close to somebody and when they hurt, you have the tendency to hurt too. Amen. And then and, and the scriptures went to say that they say if you hadn't been here, because mm. they were so broken. If you ever lose someone, you understand the brokenness. Yes, yes. If you ever lost someone, just not because they went off to California or they went cross town. But they went the way of the grave. Yes. So you know the hurt. You know it's a deep hurt. And so Mary and Martha, it showed that they wept because that was their brother. And that was their only brother. And it seemed, and it sounded like they were a close-knit family. They wasn't a distant cousin, a distant brother, but they were family. And so when they went to Jesus, and she said, I know, I know. She said, I know he's going to rise again. But Jesus said, I am the resurrection. And when he stood, and so and, and another thing that was brought to my attention, so many people say if he had called anybody else out, if he had not said Lazarus, the whole thing, everybody probably would have walked out. But when I read that scripture, I said, I beg the difference. Amen. When he went to that gravestone and he began to call Lazarus. See, not that he had to call Lazarus, but because there was obedience and the anointing. Have you ever known, we're in the same room, in the same place, and we're searching for the same God, but isn't it something how you will walk out and you say, I got mine, because God spoke to you. Mm -hmm. And it can be, five of us in here could be named Lori, but when God gets ready to deliver this Lord, that Lord, this Gloria, there's a sound that shakes heaven. There was a sound that went into that, into that grave. There was a sound that went into that tombstone. And I'm pretty sure that Lazarus wasn't the only one buried. Amen. But that Lazarus knew the voice of God. Yes. That yes. Lazarus said, I hear my father call. Yes. That Lazarus said, I'm getting up. Mm -hmm. That Lazarus. So yes, it could have been, I don't know, the Bible doesn't say how many, but you know it wasn't one Lazarus that had died. Think mm -hmm. about it. Yes, yes. There was many probably Lazarus, and they was kind. It was a family there tomb. Was many. But it's a sound that when God gets ready to deliver you, when God gets ready to set you free, when God gets ready to say, take off your 
your grave clothes. You step out and you say, I'm the one. And I believe that when he say Lazarus, come forth. That Lazarus, because he heard the voice of God. He knew the anointing. And the anointing recognized the anointing. So that's why he got up out of the grave. Yes, he was Mary and Martha's brother, but he was a Lazarus that was waiting for the resurrection. Amen. And the Bible states, the Bible states that he was dressed in his grave clothes. The Bible said, so back in the day when they dressed you, you know, they, they dressed you like a mummy, per se, like a mummy. You had all these grave clothes, everything. Everything was wrapped up. He was wrapped up. And the Bible said that Jesus says, loose him. So now they had to undo all that and let him go. Until you become loose by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Until God brings some deliverance to your house. Until God brings some deliverance to your spirit. You will still be in bondage and you will still walk around in your grave clothes. You will be the living among the dead. When God said, loose him. The grave clothes, they ran and they began to take off. At one point, I thought, did the grave clothes fall off? Because the power of God, the voice of God was so awesome. But it happened so suddenly that I do believe that some clothes fell off. When you're in a place of you need deliverance, when you're in a place that you really need God to deliver you, when you're in a place of bitterness and you say, I'm tired, I'm so tired. I'm tired of walking around in these grave, in these grave clothes. Some of us have been walking around for years and years. Some of us only been walking around in weeks and months. And we often wonder, why do I keep repeating the same thing? Hallelujah. Why do I keep living the way I live? Yes. Because still yet, we're walking with grave clothes on. It's time. The Spirit of the Lord is saying it's time. But until you take off your grave clothes, you will never live. Amen. When you go to the grave, that's death. You can sit, you can walk around, but when you actually go to the grave, that means that you are buried. You are dead. There is no more life in you. So now you're walking around like there's no, there's no life. We're, yes, we're, we're talking, we're singing, we're eating, but where is your life? Because you're still possessing the grave clothes. So this morning, I need everybody to stand up because it's time now. And you know what? And if you're one of the ones, I yell on most side, that's been carrying stuff, that's been carrying the hurt, and I know, and I know it hurts. And we can't say it doesn't hurt. Because what affects you probably would never affect me. And I can't tell you when to hurt. I can't tell you when to cry. And I can't tell you it wasn't all that bad. Come on. And I can't tell you, girl, get over it. Because when something affects you to the point of despair, when you lose something that you hold on to, and it doesn't even have to be the way of the grave, but when you lose that most precious, that most valuable, whether it be your health, your virginity, the rape, your finance, your home. And I know the scripture says you'll get another. And you understand that. But right then and there, it hurts. And the day that it affected you, you got ready you put on your grave clothes. Yes, yes. Not realizing that through every relationship you still walked around with your grave clothes on. Yes. And every relationship fell and you said it was you. You didn't speak it or you said it was them. But all the while you had them grave clothes on. And you were never, ever, ever set free. You function with your great clothes on. You met new people yes. with your great clothes on. Yes. 
You walk and talk, and you try to establish something new. But all the while, you still had them great clothes. And you always wondered through the years why. Why every now and then, this still comes back, and it hurts me. And I was a little kid when it happened. But every now and then, you remember it like it was the same day. You remember it, you remember the abandonment. You remember the rejection. You can smell, you can smell the loneliness. You can see from afar who the stranger was. Because we said, get over it. We said, that's your secret. We said, it ain't that bad. We said as a church, come on, Jesus will fix it anyway. We said, come on, grow up. We said it. That's right, that's right. We never took you in our bosom and comfort you. And when you tried to tell us that that person abused us, we turned a deaf ear. We said that was 20 years ago. We said, I remember it happened to so and so family. Yeah. 
affected other people. Not only did it affect me as a whole, but some of my decisions affected you, you, you. And then sometimes people say, ah, they just go from man to man, from woman to woman. Because the reason being, the grave clothes is still on. Yes. The Bible says that when Jesus stood at the tomb of Lazarus and he called them by name, I hear the spirit of the living God calling your name. Listen in the spirit this morning. And it may be one, it may be two, it may be three glorious in you. But he knows which Gloria he wants to bring out. I can hear the Spirit calling. I hear the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Some of us. We tried to be good parents, didn't we? We tried. Yes. But because we didn't have that example, and we maybe because somebody for so long said, ah, you're, you're a misfit, you're a bad mom, you're a bad dad, you're never amount to anything, you're no good. And so that's seed. So guess what? We put on the grave clothes. Waiting, 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 waiting to be delivered. But nobody, and because I was scared to tell you my story, because you wouldn't like me anymore, because you would say, I'm this, and I'm that, and I'm not what it seemed like. It's not that at all. It wasn't like that. Because you had me afraid to tell you when I hurt. You had me afraid to tell you that I need to be delivered. You had me afraid to hear the voice of God. I was so busy hearing your voice that when God tried to speak to me, even know his voice. But today, I don't even have, and I'm going to use it, I don't even know, Usher, we, we, I need every sheet that you can get. Whoever don't have a jacket on, I, I need a sheet. The sheet's in the back. And I need you to give them to everybody that you can. Because today, hear God, hear the Holy Ghost. Like I said, there was a sound that went, the anointing went off in the tomb. And then when it went in the tomb, the Bible says Lazarus was there. And then we do know there was a brick that was against the wall, against the hole. But through all that, through every breakthrough, through every tear, through every rejection, God is calling you by name this morning. And he said, I'm getting ready to live. I'm getting ready to let you live. Because when you step out of these grave clothes this morning, he said to Lazarus, he called him. And then he said, loose him. And any time something is loose, it's free. Think about it. Just a scenario. Have you ever had a dog? And you kept him tied up? As soon as that chain or that rope broke, you'll be all over the neighborhood looking for him because he was set free. And some people can't even find him. Uh -huh. Some people can't even find because that dog is running and running because he's set free. <laughs> yep. So today, think about that. Is here this morning. And I believe the 
walked right to him and said, I, you don't have to die. You can live. You don't have to die, but you can live. You don't have to die and sit down. Yeah, ha, ha. you made those mistakes, but it was because what you was trying. 
Great 
Ain't come to the 